Throughout the previous videos, we've been looking at the research process and we've been doing it from a bit from the perspective of marketing research, but it's any research in general follows this process. And so when you're doing research, there are a number of ethical considerations that we need to make sure that we clearly understand. And as part of um, a course, if you're taking a course with me, you will complete the TCPS2, which goes through the ethical guidances for doing research in Canada. We're gonna to talk today about some different ethical tests, about different ethical principles, and how to ensure that the research you're doing is ethical. So let's start by talking about research ethics. And here again, our slides say marketing, because uh, I designed these slides really for a marketing research course, but it applies for any type of research. So we're looking at the principles, the values, the standards, the standards of conduct followed by our researchers here and here marketing research. So there needs to be integrity of the research. There needs to be protected rights of the respondents, those who participate in your research, and we need to make sure that we treat others fairly. So let's dive into these in a little bit more detail. When we talk about integrity of research, we're talking about making sure the benefits of doing the research outweigh the cost to the participant. So there are risks to participants. If it is an experiment, a causal research design, then there might be impact, potential impacts to the health of the participant, right? You're taking a test drug or you're taking a placebo. There's expected benefits, right? We're hoping that the drug will be effective or that the nutrition, um, the health plan, the meal plan, that's the experiment that it's going to be effective, but it could have an adverse effect, right? It could impact the person's health negatively or their, their mental health. When we're asking people in interviews to disclose very personal information, you know, that can be a risk to them in terms of being uh, traumatizing. So we need to recognize there are risks. There are also social risks, the risk of people in focus groups knowing how you feel about things and then maybe that sense that you might be ostracized or that your feelings or comments are out of place from others. So there are risks to participants. When we ask you personal opinions about things, we ask about who you might vote for, right? There is that, that social stigma that might go with if others find out that you feel certain ways. So there are costs to participants. We'll go through those different risks uh, in a subsequent video, but when you are creating your research, you need to make sure the benefits of participating in the research, the benefits of the results of the research outweigh the cost to those to the participants. We also need to make sure the integrity of the research in terms of making sure that the data has not been falsified, has not been altered. Uh, for example, you couldn't get enough respondents, so you filled out half the surveys yourself, right? So it's not real people answering it. That is uh, impinging on the integrity of the research. If we're taking shortcuts, so we're claiming we have a representative, a, a um, probability sample, when it isn't, we just found a couple friends to fill out the survey, uh, then that is um, doing unethical research because we have um, reduce the integrity of the research process. Then we have the second piece in terms of ethics is the rights of the respondent. So anyone who is participating in our research process, whether they are, um, they are testing out our sample product in a test market, they are getting the drug or the placebo uh, in our medical experiments, whether they're filling out the surveys or answering interview questions, have we respected their rights? What do we mean by that? We have told them how the research will be used, who's collecting the information, that they have the ability to create informed consent so they know what they're agreeing to, they know how long the survey or uh, the activity is going to take, they know what the expectations are going in, um, and they have the ability to withdraw if they no longer consent to participation. They also need to know that um, their participation is protected in terms of will their um, responses to the survey be anonymous so nobody can attribute them back to them. Um, will their confidentiality be protected so people don't know whether or not they participated in the research project. 
So we need to make sure their rights are protected. And then we need to make sure that we are treating people fairly, that the benefits and costs are fairly are distributed fairly across. So you, par you agree to participate and provide information? Well, I can't sell that information to a third party without your permission. I can't disclose the fact that you participated in the research without your permission. And so we have to consider, for example, what if we are doing interviews with inmates and they are telling us about how they came to be in prison? Well, the agreement there is a confidentiality, which means that I am not going to disclose that information to the police without the permission of the participants. So what are you promising to the people who participate in your research project and are you upholding those? We want to make sure we're not putting our participants at risk and that we are not actually using research for another purpose than what we told the participants they were going to be that the research was going to be used for. So for example, we are not doing any sugging or frugging. So sugging is selling under the guise of research. So if I'm really just collecting information in my surveys so I can come back and sell products to you later, that is unethical research. You tell people you're using that research to improve the organization, to make social change. And if instead it's just so you can sell stuff or you sell that list of participants to somebody else uh, so they can sell stuff, that is unethical. So sugging, S-U-G-G-I-N-G, is unethical research. And frugging, F-R-U-G-G-I-N-G, my head's covering the last G there, uh, is fundraising under the guise of research. The idea here being you're telling people you're doing research for social change to improve an organization, and instead it's just so you can collect information about people who might be willing to donate to you in the future, uh, and so you're fundraising under the guise of research. So when we're doing ethical research, we need to make sure that the research process has integrity, that the benefits of doing it outweigh the costs, and that we've protected the rights of those participants. We are respecting them and their right to informed consent, anonymity, confidentiality. Uh, we have made sure that we are not putting them at too great of a risk, or if there is a risk, they know that, they are informed at that risk. So for people participate, right, in drug trials, um, they need to be know ahead of time that there may be a risk to their health, physical health, mental health, and that they are participating with that informed consent. They, they agree that they're going to take on that risk. So make sure people are treated fairly, uh, that we are not sharing their information, that we're not using it for another purpose than what we've told them, uh, and we have taken steps to mitigate any risks that exist. So when it comes to a research uh, project, there are some kind of um, general rules of thumb, uh, ethical tests to consider. And so these tests are common sense, one's best self-interest, making something public, ventilation, purified ideas, big four, and the gag test. So we are thinking about being involved in a research project. We take a common sense approach. If the proposed research project violates your common sense, then of course we shouldn't do it, right? So you should have a kind of a gut reaction um, to it and it should make sense to you. If the proposed course of action is not consistent with your perception of yourself at your best, right? So if you feel like you kind of have to hold your nose to do something, uh, then you should not be participating in that type of research. If you wouldn't be comfortable with people knowing you did something, then don't do it, right? <laughs> That's the making something public. Uh, so uh, that, that transparency is a double check to make sure that the research we're conducting really is ethical research. If, you're, if we expose your proposed course of action, your research um, to others' opinions, right? getting a second opinion, having someone review your research design and your methods, your sampling plan, how you're gonna go about collecting your 
uh, participants, uh, have other people vet it, look over it, give you feedback to it uh, to make sure that they view it as uh, ethically uh, or responsible research. If you don't think that others, such as an accountant or a lawyer, would be good with what you're doing, uh, then uh, <laughs> don't do it, right? So think about it from that perspective of does it put us in any legal risk? Uh, does it put us in financial jeopardy? Are there liability concerns? Um, so have that, look at that uh, research project from more of that uh, purified um, uh, perspective there. Uh, don't compromise your actions or decisions by greed, speed, laziness, or haziness. So the big four, greed, speed, laziness, or haziness. So we, as we had talked about before, you know, I can't get enough people to participate in my survey, so I'm going to fill out half of the survey responses myself. I'm trying to speed up this process. Uh, so don't be compromised, uh, the, don't compromise the integrity of your research, right, um, in, in the name of speed, of getting it done quickly. Or what would be the most ethical form of research is going to take time, is going to be costly. Um, so in order to protect confidentiality, we actually need to hire individuals who are um, a bit removed from the situation so that they can um, provide that unbiased uh, interview. And so that would be costly. So sometimes we need to do that. And, and so you need to take that into consideration. We'll talk a little bit more about that um, in a, another example we give in the next video. But um, if it's going to be more costly, do you need those costs in order to maintain the integrity of your research? The cheapest route um, if it's going to compromise your integrity, uh, then you need to think again about doing the research project. So greed, speed, all right, laziness, the easiest approach, um, or haziness, unclear on what should be happening. Make sure that you aren't compromising your research uh, in the name of those big four. And really, um, if the thought of it <laughs> makes you gag, uh, then, then don't do it. So just kind of, you know, generic tests as we're looking at a research project. Make sure it's something that if other people know about it, if, if accountants and lawyers were to vet it, they would be fine with it. If other researchers knew about your process, they would be fine with it. Those are good tests for making sure uh, you are doing ethical research. Now, of course, it's more complicated than just that. So we want to dive into the core principles uh, that exist for research and the ethical guidelines that exist. Uh, there are ones specific to marketing research. There are ones specific to other industries, depending on what it is you're working on, whether it is um, whether it's experimental research that is doing the clinical trials, there are particular guidelines on the ethics for those. There are a lot of similarities though, so we'll go through the similarities um, in the next video. So we'll dive into more details in our next video.